Hi, this is Lost in Electronics, and this is, uh, we're going to be going to, uh, what our video is going to be about today is we're going to be going through on uh, some basics of port forwarding. Um, what we're going to be doing here, since I do use Spectrum Internet, I want to go ahead and go through probably one of the uh, more requested topics I've had in the past, which is on how to do port forwarding. Uh, first thing I want to do on a SageCom is what we want to do is we're going to have we're going to go ahead and log into the default address at this point we're going to go it's which is 192.168.1.1 if you haven't changed it yet. After logging in is going to ask you to is going to ask you for a username and password here. And the username is admin, and the password is password. Sorry, this one is admin's username, admin's the password. Uh, then what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and you want to go ahead and go click on the advanced settings. And if you're connected with your Ethernet, it will show you your adapter, whatever your adapter settings are. One thing, one the one of the first things I would recommend doing here is overriding your DNS. Uh, what you can do is you go to attain, click on to automatically attain, and we're gonna use the DNS as I like his Cloudflare's one dot one dot one dot one, and secondary is eight dot eight dot eight dot eight, which is Google's. Also, if you would use the Spectrum TV app, this is a very helpful tip to be able to make sure that it will run a little bit better. Other things we want to do if you are using wireless is we're going to go ahead and uh, click on the two gears if you want to change your wireless settings. We'll go ahead and, and do that a, on the next video. Uh, how to do port 40. First thing we're going to actually do is if we had a device, we're going to actually going to click on the device. We're going to click on to port 40. And sometimes it can make it pretty easy because we can go, for example, games and applications. First thing we're going to use is an example on how to add an Xbox port here. So we're going to click on Xbox One, click on to add port, and also the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that our ports are opened here for the Xbox. So we're going to have, we need our internal, external, so our uh, first thing we're going to do is our internal and uh, beginning port and external port. So we're going to do port 80 to port 80. And we're just going to be calling it, we're going to call the name of this rule set, this we're going to call it Xbox One V1. And we're going to go ahead and check and look at our what we need to use for uh, our port numbers here. So for the Xbox One, we need to make sure that port 8088 is open up, and that is going to be a UDP port. UDP makes it, what it, the difference between TCP and UDP is, UDP allows it to not send a verification, and TCP sends the verification. So we're gonna go ahead and switch back to my other screen here. And so we're going to make sure this is a UDP port because it's going to say what type. So we're going to put UDP and we're going to make sure that our port, so we want to make sure is open is going to be port 88. So we're going to click on to add. Then we're going to make sure that we go to the next character range, which is in this case is we're going to make sure that Port 53 is open. Uh, port 53 is used for your DNS. So like if you uh, need to go and type it, instead of going to 8.8.8.8, it knows, hey, this is where Google's located at. And we'll go ahead and show you an example of what uh, what this actually does with port 53 that we're going to be opening up. So we go and ping google.com. We're actually using port 53 and that we're going to Google. When you go, what happens to know that it's Google, we have to go to this address, the 172.217.4.100, and that tells you where Google server is. That's the translation protocol that they use to be able to use it for the port. 
So we're gonna have to go add that in there. And we wanna make sure that's both TCP and UDP because we need a verification when it sends that protocol here. And it looks like they've already opened majority of those ports already for us when we actually added in our port forwarding for our uh, for the Xbox. Looks like it's already been added in here. So we're going to go ahead and make sure those are added in here for you if it hasn't already. And we're just going to call this Xbox One Rule. Number two. And it's a conflicting port because I already have it open because of the fact that we opened for the Xbox. We already told the uh, settings we already wanted to use the Xbox. It already had that in the game rules. Now we're going to go ahead and go to PlayStation 3 on how to open up the ports. So we're going to first see if it's already here. So we may not have to go through all the settings. So we have PlayStation 4 and so in PlayStation Network. So we do want to go and place add PlayStation Network. And if it wasn't already have a confliction port, we'd also add PlayStation 4. And both of those have conflicting, conflicting ports because they use the Xbox. So if we would remove the Xbox and we just do this here, then what we would do here, if we would need to, let's say we're using the PlayStation 4, we would scroll down and we want to click on device, click on PlayStation 4, and click on add, hit apply. And then it's going to go ahead and go to the role set. And you will be able to open the rules, and it opens up all the port numbers for the PlayStation that's already built in here. So that's how you'll be able to open the port numbers for your console systems. The other things you may need to know if you are using the, if you want to make sure you can run your games properly and make sure everything's configured properly, the next thing we want to do is we want to check if you are using wireless. Let's make sure the configuration of the wireless is set up here. Normal recommendation is auto. We're also going to go to the advanced settings, and we want to make sure the auto bandwidth, because that's going to tell you the bandwidth. The wireless channel mode is if you want to use there, normally we'd want to either use N, or if you don't, if you have some order device, you might want to have NNG to get the most compatible bill. Then on the 5G, we're actually going to click on the gear again. We're going to go ahead and click on to the advanced logo again. And then we're going to make sure it's on auto bandwidth. And then we want the mode to be A, N, C, and A, C. Now, if you have all newer devices, you may want to just to click on A, C because that will give you the better devices for the link speeds.